Hello people, in this video we want to look at Burkitt's lymphoma. Burkitt's lymphoma is a type of non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Hope you have watched the previous video where you have understood the differences between Hodgkin lymphoma and non-Hodgkin lymphoma. So Burkitt's lymphoma is an example for non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Here the mature B cells are involved, correct? You know this is a mature B cell neoplasm. Right, so the same thing can turn into a leukemia where it can become an L3 ALL leukemia, okay. That is uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, okay. So basically what is this, uh, if you want in layman's terms, it is a high grade tumor. <clears throat> it's a rapidly progressive tumor, okay. So that means it is cancer, it's a malignancy. It accounts for 30% of the childhood non-Hodgkin lymphomas, the cell of origin is the B cell. So this is a lymph node in which you have a lot of germinal centers. From this germinal center, this uh, B cell neoplasm is originating. Okay, that is Burkitt's lymphoma. Is this clear? What exactly happens in the Burkitt's lymphoma? Look at this. This is the chromosomal abnormality. This is normal and this is the Burkitt's lymphoma, the abnormality, chromosomal abnormality. Normal, first you look at normal. In normal, what happens, there is a chromosome 8, chromosome 14, you know there are so many chromosomes within us. This 8 will have an MYC gene and this 14 will have an IG, uh, IG gene. Okay, that is a IG gene. Okay, now in Burkitt's lymphoma, this MYC gene will jump from 8 to 14. So this MYC gene translocation has happened. So there is a translocation of 8 to 14. So this is the translocation in what? In Burkitt's lymphoma. This is the chromosomal abnormality that you will see in Burkitt's lymphoma. Now why this translocation can happen? You know that there are a lot of oncogenic virus like Epstein-Barr virus is one of those virus which is oncogenic. Because of this virus, this translocation may happen. So look at this virus, Epstein-Barr virus. It's a DNA virus. It's a human herpes virus 4. It causes infectious mononucleosis. So this Epstein-Barr virus <clears throat> which is a DNA virus can lead to this translocation involving <clears throat> the CMYC which is a proto-oncogene. It can get translocated and uh, this is the Ig loci, this one. So here in the exam you will write T8 semicolon 14. So this is the translocation, you will have to write this, okay. This translocation can happen because of Epstein-Barr virus. Now look at this one. So Burkitt's lymphoma 8 semicolon 14 CMYC IgH, okay. So this CMYC on 8 it was supposed to be, IgH on 14 it was supposed to be, okay. Both are on the Q arms of the chromosome. You can see both are on the Q arms itself. So now let us move on now. <clears throat> what is Q arm? This is the pitite arm of the chromosome. And the other one will be called as the Q arm, right? So both on the Q arm, they are jumping from one place to the other, translocated. So let, let us look at the clinical features of Burkitt's lymphoma. See, in lymphoma, usually the lymph nodes are affected, right? That's why lymphoma. Leukemia means it spills over to the blood. Now, lymphoma means what? It is a, oma means tumor. Lymphoma means tumor of the lymph node. <clears throat> this is actually a, Misnomer, it is not a benign condition, it is malignancy. Okay, here what you will see, adolescents or young adults with extra nodal masses. Okay, so then it can become leukemia which is aggressive. Guys, how is it going so far with Burkitt's lymphoma? You understood the chromosome translocation, you understood that it is because of B cells, correct? It is a non-Hodgkin lymphoma, all this you have understood. Now let's move on to the subgroups. So everything will have more types under them. This will have more types under it also. So the subgroups are uh, African endemic Burkitt's lymphoma. This is an endemic sporadic Burkitt's lymphoma. This is not endemic sporadic Burkitt's lymphoma. Then you have this Burkitt's lymphoma which is seen in HIV people. Okay. This African endemic Burkitt's lymphoma seems to be what they want to call as true Burkitt's lymphoma. Here actually African children, they present with this jaw tumor which spreads to the bone marrow and even the meninges, right? It can even spread to the meninges. So that is what um, is here, right? It can spread to the meninges. So 
it can spread to the bone marrow. <clears throat> so the jaw tumor spreads to bone marrow, spreads to meninges. These are the extra nodal sites. It is usually caused by Epstein Barr virus. Okay. Now sporadic Burkitt's lymphoma. Sporadic Burkitt's lymphoma is uh, a variant. Okay. Here there is more pleomorphism and multinucleate cells can be there. It will infiltrate into the CNS and it is more aggressive. Okay. So that much also we will write down now. Okay. Then we will move on to the Burkitt's lymphoma caused um, in AIDS patient. Okay. So some of the AIDS patients are susceptible to malignancies like Kaposi sarcoma, Burkitt's lymphoma. So they are uh, susceptible to these lymphomas, AIDS patients, right? So uh, they are susceptible to Burkitt's lymphoma, okay? Now you have seen the subgroups of Burkitt's lymphoma. Now we will move on to the histology. So histology to tell in one word, there will be starry sky appearance, stars in the sky. See, starry sky appearance. I'm thinking that these are the stars. This is one star. This is one more star. This is one more star. This is another star. This is another star. Do you think these are the stars or you think something else is the star here? So there's a starry sky appearance. Okay. So this is in low power. In low power, they are seeing starry sky appearance. What are these uh, stars? They are macrophages. Okay. So they are macrophages. In high power, you will see that there are multiple small nucleoli, high mitotic index. There is lack of significant variation in nuclear size and shape. There is a monotonous appearance. Okay. Multiple small nuclei. So this is overall the histology. Guys, if you have to draw in the exam, you will have to draw something like this. Draw a circle, put a lot of nucleoli in them because in high power, there are a lot of prominent nucleoli, right? The nucleoli are many. Okay. Multiple small nucleoli. Remember, it is not nucleus which are multiple. Nucleoli are multiple. There is there's a monotonous appearance. There is significant variation. Um, there is no significant variation in the nuclear shape and size. Okay. High mitotic index. So that is what you will see in high power. Okay. So you should remember low power, high power. Now, let us read about this. So, the tumor cells are uh, intermediate in size. They are non-cleave. They are homogeneous in size and shape. This is what is everywhere. They are saying same thing. Homogeneous size and shape. The nuclei, how are the nuclei round to oval? They contain 2 to 5 nucleoli. So, what is more here? The nucleoli are more. Okay. The write all the standard things that you will see, okay, uh, in any neoplasm. The cytoplasm is basophilic. So you remember you have to write basophilic cytoplasm, make it blue. Okay, it contains lipid vacuolation. Right, the tumor cells have high mitotic rate, very high mitotic rate. That's what is a rapidly progressing disease. Remember, everywhere they are saying the same thing, high mitotic index, very high mitotic rate. Right, therefore there is high cell death also. So whenever there is cell death, what these macrophages do, they will go and pick up all this debris. So the debris will give a starry sky appearance. Okay. All these phagocytosed tumor debris. Okay. In the macrophages, it gives a starry sky appearance. Read this statement again. The feature, this feature accounts for presence of numerous macrophages in the background of this tumor containing phagocytosed tumor debris, giving it a starry sky appearance. Okay. So there are tumor cells. The tumor cells have a nucleus which has multiple nuclei. In the surrounding of these tumor cells, there are macrophages because of which it, you get a starry sky appearance. That is what it looks like. The presence of numerous macrophages in the background of this, this tumor containing phagocytose tumor debris gives a starry sky appearance. So in the background, there are macrophages. Now moving on, if you immunophenotype it, okay, in Burkitt's lymphoma, if you immunophenotype it, the tumor cells will be positive for 19 and CD10. CD19 and CD10 positive they will be, okay. Burkitt's lymphoma, CD19, CD10, okay. And also there will be surface immunoglobulin, IgM. Guys, these points are very specific. You should know such points, okay? Just listen to that. Immunophenotypically, the 
tumor cells are positive for CD19 and CD10 and service immunoglobulin IgM. Thank you so much for saying that. Now let's take a recap of Burkitt's lymphoma. Are you ready? We are done with whatever we wanted to say as pathology in Burkitt's lymphoma. Further details you can read from the textbook. So let's take a recap. Burkitt's lymphoma is a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. It's a high-grade tumor. It is a rapidly progressive human tumor. It's rapidly progressive. Okay. The cell of origin is the germinal center B cell. Okay, it is a mature B cell lymph neoplasm. So mature B cells only you will see. Okay. It can be caused by Epstein-Barr virus. The main uh, uh, genetic abnormality or the chromosome abnormality here is that translocation of 8 to 14. So from 8, the MYC gene jumps to 14. So this is 8-14 translocation. Okay. The clinical features will be adolescents or young adults with extranodal masses. There are subgroups, three subgroups. You have the African endemic Burkitt's lymphoma. This is the true lymph, uh, Burkitt's lymphoma. African children, uh, they will present with jaw tumor. This jaw tumor, they can then spread to extranodal sites like bone marrow meninges. Okay, then. It can be caused mainly by Epstein-Barr virus in Africa. Then you have sporadic, sporadic, sudden, sporadic Burkitt's lymphoma. It is more aggressive and it can infiltrate into the CNS. It is pleomorphic, more pleomorphic. Remember sporadic. I have a feeling you will forget this word, sporadic Burkitt's lymphoma. Then in AIDS patients, uh, in HIV, uh, there can be uh, immunodeficiency associated Burkitt's lymphoma. Okay. Let's say AIDS, no, not HIV, okay? Because AIDS is the immunodeficiency. Histologically, what will you see in low power? Starry sky appearance, okay? And then in the high power, you will see small tumor cells which have basophilic cytoplasm, round to oval nuclei with, in, within which you have 2 to 5 nucleoli. Okay, there's a very homogeneous appearance. In the background of tumor cells, there'll be a lot of macrophages which will give it a starry sky appearance. Right? Then we saw the immunophenotyping. These tumor cells will be positive for CD19, CD10 and surface immunoglobulin IgM. Okay, so that's all about Burkitt's lymphoma guys. I uh, hope you have understood something in this video. We will meet again in the next video. Okay. Bye-bye.